Hey, I'm Jason. Welcome to the Half Garage Workshop. Today in the workshop, my lathe needs some balls, and we're going to make them. This is my lathe. There are many like it, but this one is mine. So let me bring you in here and we'll show you what we're going to be doing today in the shop. So one of the first machine tools that I acquired and put in the half garage workshop is my metal lathe. This is a 12 by 36 cabinet mounted lathe manufactured by Atlas and sold by Sears under their Craftsman brand. It's considered a light duty lathe and it's light duty compared to like a big industrial lathe. It was sold for people to use in their home shops, in garages, in a, on the farm, but it's uh, quite capable for everything I wanted to do. And as long as you're aware of its limitations, it's a good lathe. This particular lathe was manufactured in 1971, which means it's actually the same age as me. So considering that, it's held up in pretty good shape. But there is one thing which I want to take care of on the lathe. I'm going to zoom you in here on the Telstock, show you what's uh, missing and how we're going to fix it. So this is the Telstock of my lathe. The Telstock is used to support long pieces of work when you're being turned in the lathe. You also can add drill trucks and other tools and attachments to do various operations. The Telstock moves back and forth on the bed of the, of the lathe. It's tightened down with a clamp that's operated by a lever back here. Now you might notice the, the end of this lever is threaded and something should be here, but it's gone. There should be a ball on here that makes it much nicer to hold in your hand and you know, operate, but I don't know where that ball is. So we're gonna make a tool to make a ball to fix the telesock of my lathe. Now sure, we could probably buy one, we could maybe even 3D print one, but it'd be even more fun to make a tool, to fix the tool, that made the tool. So we're gonna be doing that today in the workshop. But what we wanna be able to do is to cut a radius, to cut a ball on the end of this piece. So to do that, what we're gonna do is replace the tool post and the compound side on the top with an attachment that we're gonna create here in the shop. What we're gonna do is build an attachment that goes on here where we can mount a cutting tool and have it swivel and spin on a bearing to allow us to cut a radius on the end of the piece. So for the base, we need about an inch and an eighth of total length, but we gotta have some to hang on to. So we're gonna cut this piece off to uh, about an inch and five eighths. Now, it's one of the universal truths uh, and unwritten laws of machining that whatever operation you want to do on the lathe, the chuck you have installed is probably not the one you need, and that's certainly the case now. Uh, we want to mount our workpiece up to start machining the base, and since we're going to be doing features on both sides and we want them to be concentric, instead of using the three-jaw chuck, what we want is our four-jaw chuck where we, can in, where we can indicate and center the piece up independently and move it around with the jaws. With a three-jaw chuck, it's just gonna clamp it and sell or self-center, but it's not accurate enough to be able to make a cut, pull a piece out, spit it around, and make cuts on the other side and guarantee that things are perfectly centered. So I'm gonna switch out the uh, chuck, uh, get my workpiece mounted up, indicate it in so that it's running true, and then we'll get started. Okay, now that we got the uh, part centered in the chuck, we're going to uh, start facing off the front so that the back and the top, bottom and the top of the piece are parallel to each other. Uh, after that, we'll then start cutting down our diameters for our bearing journal and for the outside of the uh, part before we flip it over and finish the other side. All right, now that we have the outer diameter of our base 
uh, to size, <clears throat> at least as far down as we can go without flipping the part. Next thing to cut is the journal that our bearing and the uh, upper movable part of the tool will ride on. Uh, so we need to cut this for about uh, 450 thousandths of an inch and uh, down a whole lot, down to 667 thousandths. So we got a lot of material to remove, so we'll start that and I'll bring you back at the end. All right, we're starting to get close to our final uh, diameter for the journal, so let's uh, take a measurement and see where we're at. Okay, it puts us at uh, 711 thousandths, 11 and a half. So we've got about uh, 50 or so more to go. Over there. So I've got it dialed in. Let's uh, take that and uh, see how we did. Okay, so the dimension we were going for there was 667 and a half thousandths of an inch. So let's uh, see how we did. All right, we are spot on maybe half a thou under, but that's all right. The uh, surface finish here on the face isn't as great as I'd like it to be, so I'm going to clean that up with a little bit of emery, but uh, otherwise we are good to go. So we have one last feature to cut on this side before we can take it out and flip it over. We're going to cut the uh, eighth of an inch lip that uh, is recessed into the top that the upper uh, section pivots on. So it covers to keep uh, chips from getting up underneath and getting in our bearing. So we're just going to cut an eighth inch by eighth inch little recess around the rim there. And then we'll uh, chair for the corners and uh, pull it out and go on to the other side. While we were off camera, we got the part flipped around and recentered and indicated in the lathe, so it's running true. So now what we're going to do is cut the outer diameter down to its final size, and then we'll be uh, boring out the pocket in the bottom that mounts to the actual tool post on the cross slide. So let's get started. And there we go. I'm going to uh, hit that little bit of emery real quick and uh, polish it up and we'll be done on the outside of that part. So now we're going to bore out the recess or the pocket on the bottom that will mount to the cross slide. So let's get started. Now that we have our pallet hole drilled out big enough to provide some clearance for our boring bar, we can uh, start boring it out to the inch and a half that we're going to need so that it fits over the uh, mount post. Okay, we should be getting close. Let's take a measurement and see where we are. Okay, that's one, four, five, three. So one inch, four hundred and fifty-three thousand. So we have forty-seven thousandths more to come off.
All right, and there we go. We are about three thousandths over, which should give us some good clearance on the post. I'm going to, uh, I'm actually going to take another maybe five thou or so. So it's not quite that close. So we can definitely get it on over the post if there's any burrs or anything. Like Okay, so we're at one inch, five hundred and ten thousandths, so just ten thousandths of an inch over an inch and a half, which is the size of our mount post, so that should be good. I'll give us some good clearance. I'm going to swap the boring bar out for my chamfer tool, uh, cut some chamfer here on the, uh, uh, on, on the inner board. All right, so that's all the work we're gonna do on the lathe on this part. We're gonna take it out and go over to the mill where we're going to drill a couple of uh, holes at 90 degrees to each other and tap them uh, for our mounting screws. Okay, we have our part over here at the milling machine and what we're gonna do is use our edge finder to locate the center and the rear edge of the part so we can uh, locate the spot for the holes we wanna drill. We'll mill off flat, drill and tap our holes for the set screws that will hold it in place on the, uh, on the lathe. Now, one drawback of having a small mill, though, is that uh, I don't have a ton of travel in the Z direction, up and down. Uh, and in fact, I don't have enough space to get the uh, 5 16 inch drill bit in that I need to drill the holes. So what we're going to do is we'll just spot drill it and locate where it's going to be, and we'll take things over to the uh, drill press to actually drill and tap it for a 3 8 16 inch set screw. Um, so let's get started. All right, so let's uh, put a little chamfer on the edge of this so the tap starts a little easier. Okay, do some cutting oil. All right, there we go. All right, we're back at the bench. I just wanted to sort of show you where we were and uh, do some layout before we move on to the next step. Uh, the base is done. We got our set, there are holes for the set screws drilled and tapped and uh, it's all ready to be going to be mounted to the base. Uh, off camera, I did the lathe work on the rotor. It's pretty much, pretty simple and pretty much the same thing we saw before. We just uh, turned the outside diameter to size, uh, faced off front and back and board out for our, this recess for our lip and then for where the bearing is going to go. Here's the bearing we're going to be using. So that bearing will be uh, fit into there and then pressed onto the journal of the rotor and these two pieces will go together. And uh, the rotor will turn and allow us to cut our, our, our uh, balls. So now what we need to do is do a little layout and uh, to get some reference lines in for uh, for the milling that we need to do to cut the slot for the tool holder and a recess for our uh, set screws so we can get to them. So I'm going to blue this up and then give it a few seconds to dry and we'll come back and do some layout. All right, our dicom's all dry, so let's uh, start by laying this out. First thing we're going to do is find the center line. Right, so there's the center, and now we want uh, the channel where our tool holder is going to slide. It's going to be three eighths of an inch, or 0.375 wide, and it's going to. And so what we'll do is we'll mark off three sixteenths on either side. So set, get our divider set for three sixteenths. All right, so this area in here will be what we mill out for the channel. And then, and then we need to uh, make another line three eighths of an inch more below there, uh, which will be uh, the area that we recess down to make space for the tool, for the uh, set screws. All 
And this area down here will also be milled away. And then the uh, front is gonna be a little bit deeper. It's gonna be 9 16 deep to give us some clearance for our uh, screws and the, heads of the set screws and for the tap to make some space. So we'll do a set that for 9 16 All right, so that should give us a good idea of what we're gonna be cutting away. So it'll be yeah, this 3 8 inch square channel will be going all the way through. And then we'll be milling this part away to give us clearance to drill and tap our set screws. Okay, so let's take that over to the milling machine. So I was just about to load the uh, quarter into the milling machine and the vise, and I realized we got a problem. Our part is three and a quarter inches, and my vise only opens up to three inches. So we gotta figure out something else to do. Now, one thing you quickly learn that uh, being a, a machinist, or a hobby machinist in particular, and especially in a small shop, is it's all about problem solving. So we gotta figure out what to do. Well, we could take it back to the lathe and make the part smaller. I just used, pick three and a quarter inches for it because that was about the size of the stock that I had. But that would be a lot of work, so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to take a look around the shop, see what we can find, and uh, come up with something better to do. So I have to look around the shop a bit. I realize that I do have a larger vise. It's my 4-inch drill press vise. So this vise is nowhere near as precise as the milling machine vise. But since the part we're doing is, gonna, is round, we just need to cut a slot across it and then mill this part out. This will get the job done for what we want. So what we can do is we can... Uh, load the part in the vise, and then use a V-block to take up the space on this side. And that way we have three points of contact and we can get this in here and help firmly and uh, get the job done. So I need to swap out my vices. So. We got the drill press vise installed on the mill. We have our uh, rotor uh, loaded up and aligned and centered, and a 3 inch roughing end mill and the tool holders. So we're ready to go. Let's get to it. Okay, there's our slot. Now let's uh, move over and melt the rest of that recess. So the last operation we need to do on the rotor is to drill and tap three holes for our set screws. And we're going to be using number 10 by 24 fence per inch uh, set screws. So we'll be spotting the hole. Next we'll uh, drill it with a number 25 uh, bar gauge drill bit, which is the correct tap size for 1024, and then we'll run a tap through it and we'll be done with the rotor. So the final piece of our radius cutter that we need to make is the tool holder. So we cut out a uh, piece of 3x8 steel, just mild steel from uh, some bar stock, and uh, we're going to be 
shaping this on the milling machine. So what we're going to be doing, the tube cutter, you know, will ride in the slot that we have drilled into the rotor. And we'll be able to adjust the radius of whatever ball we want to cut by moving the slide in and out. And then on the top, we'll be attaching a carbide cutter bit that's off of a set of lathe uh, tooling. They'll be attached there, and that will actually do the cutting. So it'll be set, this will be set at the center high and hide the lathe with the measure in a bit. But for now, what we want to do is uh, get this piece squared up. We're going to cut the bottom piece off so that to, to it's 3 8 inch tall and square with the slide. We'll clean up all the other angles and uh, cut some relief on the inside of this for the tool. So we'll uh, get doing that on the lathe, and I'll take you and show you as we go. Now that we have the uh, stock that's going to be our tool holder kind of roughed out and squared up, what we need to do is now actually assemble the rotor and the base together so we can mount it on the lathe and measure you know, exactly where the height needs to be because it's the one critical dimension is the cutting tool needs to be <clears throat> the cutting tool needs to be precisely at the center line of the lathe so that it can make an even and uh, accurate cut to when we're turning and cutting our the balls that we're going to make. So there's the height that we have to have our tool, so it's dead on the center line. So the next thing we need to do for our tool holder is uh, to cut some relief behind our cutter. So our carbide insert, that's gonna be our cutting bit, is a equilateral triangle, 60 degrees in those angles. So what we need to do is remove this metal and provide some relief underneath here, underneath the edge of the bit. So we need to cut a 60 degree uh, point, 60 degree angle here, centered on, on this piece. Now this setup is admittedly a little bit sketchy with the uh, workpiece hanging out here off the side of the vise, but that's the best way I could think of to do it. We have a 30 degree precision angle block that we use to set the piece in there. It's held down really tight in the vise. I really cranked on that thing. So we're going to take light cuts and uh, go for it. We need to make a total depth of 230,000 if my trigonometry is right now remember all uh, sine cosine sakatoa and all that stuff and i did the math right so let's uh go for it and see if we got what we get Okay, slight update. We got the one side of our relief done. And yes, my math was wrong. It wasn't uh, 230 that we had to go. It was 165,000. I had to call in a uh, phone a friend and get my 17-year-old uh, daughter who's uh, much uh, more recently exposed to trig than I am and have her check my math and uh, figure out the right answer. So uh, kids are useful sometimes. So uh, we're going to get set up on the opposite side now and uh, do the other half.
All right, that looks good. Let's uh, take it back over the lathe and uh, see how we did as far as the uh, height. We can adjust it by a few thousand. Okay, that looks like it's going to be right on the money as far as the uh, height. I mean, right at or just a hair below the center line, which is what we want. So that's good. Now we just need to uh, get that brazed on to the tip. We're going to do some silver soldering, get that attached, and we'll be done. Okay, so the last operation we really have to do to finish off our radius turning tool is to attach our carbide insert to the, uh, to the tool holder that we made. Okay, it may not be pretty, but I think we got it on there. Let that cool down, uh, hit it with a uh, honing stone to kind of clean it up a little bit, and then we'll be ready to test this thing out. Okay, now it's time for the moment of truth. We're gonna use this tool that we've been making to cut a ball and give our lathe some balls. So what we have loaded up here in the chuck, I have a rod that I turned down, and then on the end of it is a one inch long by one inch diameter cylinder, and we're gonna turn that cylinder into a one inch sphere or a ball. Uh, we have the lathe currently set up, the tool currently set up on the center of that one by one cylinder. So it's right at the half inch line. And I have a dial indicator down here with a zero set right at that center line point. So when we, when we come back to it, we'll know we're there. Uh, we're, we were going to do the cut. We're going to start it here at the end. And I have it set up so that the tip of the cutter is a half inch from our center line of the bart. And it's touching both sides equally. So it's very just touching off both edges there. So we're going to start out here. We'll sweep a radius with the tool. And we'll advance inwards towards the headstock a little at a time and, you know, cut our um, sphere. And we know once we get back to the center line and we're on zero that we've cut that half. You'll see as we go. So I'll turn on the time lapse and uh, wish me luck. All right, looking good so far. Now I'm gonna uh, take the tool post off, take the radius cutter off, put our tool post back on, get us our parting tool and uh, get this split off so we can put a thread on the end. at our uh, first half of our ball turn and now we're going to put a thread on the end of this screw it back on and turn the out so we have the end of our rod uh, we parted it off turned down to a quarter inch here i have a, a quarter 20 die load up here in my tail stock die holder so we're just going to advance that up to the part and then i'm just going to turn the chuck here by hand and cut the thread on the end All right, and there we have our uh, quarter 20 thread on there. Uh, we can take our ball, screw it on the thread we just cut. And then we'll swap back to our ball turner and cut the other half of it.
All right, and that should do it. We have our one inch ball. Just have to uh, screw that off from the arbor and uh, test it out. Now for the moment of truth. Let's see if this uh, fits in. How it does. All right, perfect. So now I no longer am going to get these little cuts in the middle of my hand every time I go to lighten or loosen the tailstock. So I will call that a success. So uh, I have got a lot of cleaning to do. You want to see, we made uh, quite the mess here on the lathe. So I've got a whole bunch of chips to clean up. But uh, it's getting late and uh, got to clean this up and then start editing this video, get it out to you guys. So I want to thank you once again for stopping by the Half Garage Workshop and spending a little time with me cutting on some metal and making some chips and having a good time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please uh, take a second to hit that thumbs up button and like, subscribe, do all those other YouTube things that you're supposed to do. Uh, if you get any questions, please feel free to leave it down in the comment and uh, I'll see you next time.